Hello! I'm going to write a simple little Python program to get you kind of acquainted with ideas of variables and doing basic math. So I find it makes the most sense um, to introduce programming concepts if you're uh, trying to build something that is tangible. Um, it's one thing to just say like a equals b plus c and then you know assign some values and stuff like that. Uh, maybe not as useful to see like where those come in handy. So what I'm going to start out with here is a recipe program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up a simple cookie recipe really quick. I just need uh, the, the ingredients. That's really all I need. So let me just find some things and I'm going to create a um, set of variables for each ingredient. So with variables, these are just names that you create and you can store information in them. It can be um, like numbers, it could be strings, which is text inside of these double quotes right here, um, and other things. All of these cookies are too complicated. We need a simple cookie recipe. <laughs> okay, I think I found one. So with a cookie, we'll need some amount of flour, so I'm just going to kind of copy down these ingredients. So ingredients stored in variables. Well, for flour, we need two cups. There's not really a way to specify that. I really just need the numbers because we're going to do some math with these numbers. Um, for baking soda, it's going to be 0 0.5 teaspoons. And I'm just making this reference here. These are comments, but I'm putting these here because eventually I'll output this to the user. I don't really need this over here taking up space. And let's say a half teaspoon of salt. So salt is going to be 0 0.5 teaspoons. Um, we need 3 fourths cup of butter. So that's this. Butter is equal to 0 0.75 cups of unsalted butter. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's do sugar is 0 0.5 cups. We need one egg. I'll just put eggs as the name because if we're going to double the recipe, it'll be more than one egg. And let's say chocolate chips is two cups. So I've created a bunch of variables. Right now this program does nothing but says recipe program down here. So what I want to do first is we're going to just display the chocolate chip cookie recipe. So I'm just going to use simple print statements and display each one of these. So uh, we'll need flour and this is in cups. So if I run this, it'll say two cups. It takes the, the value stored in flour. If I change this to five, It'd be five cups. We don't need that much flour though. Um, so I'm just going to print out all of the different um, ingredients. I don't know why I did that. Baking soda. And that's why I put that comment on the side so I'd know whether to put teaspoons or not. Print salt. Um, teaspoons of salt. And we need butter. Print out butter and cups print sugar and cups of sugar, eggs, and I mean, that's just the total of that. I realize now I'm not actually telling the user what ingredient each of these are, so we'll go back in a minute. Chocolate chips, and this is going to be cups. So at the moment, this isn't a very useful program because if I run this, it doesn't actually tell me <laughs> which ingredient each of these are. It just gives me a bunch of measurements. So I'm also going to go ahead and put cups of flour, teaspoons of baking soda, teaspoons of salt, cups of butter, cups of sugar, eggs, and cups of chocolate chips. So now if I run this and hit play, It'll do recipe program, chocolate chip cookie recipe, and then it'll give me all of these ingredients. 
So that's the first step. I'm going to actually make this font a little smaller. It's kind of big, but it's better for screen sharing generally. Okay, so what we're going to do next is... Actually, I'm going to put a little print over here just so we have some spacing. I happen to be a very big fan of spacing <laughs> in my text programs so that it's easier to read. And if you're not familiar with this already, you can use slash T for tab, and that should tab things over a bit and make it easier to read down um, in our program output. So let's see if that all lines up. There we go. Two cups of flour, 0.5 teaspoons, and so on. So this program just displays uh, the basic um, ingredient list. But what we're going to add is asking how, how many batches do you want to make? Do you want to make half a batch? Do you want to make double the batch? Um, so we can display the, the standard version here. This is just the default. Then we'll also ask the user batch bat, batch quantity input. How many batches would you like to make? And so it'll ask them, um, well, I guess we can make the input a little bit clearer, 0 0.5 for half, 2 point, or just 2 for double, and so on. It could be any number. We could do 1.3, and we'll calculate it. That's the point of this program. But just for user reference, 0 0.5 will be half of a batch. OK, so it'll run through. It'll display the, the recipe. I'm going to add a print here, because I like things being spaced out. Um, we can enter something, but nothing happens because we haven't written the rest of the program. So we have each of these. We have these variables, and we're going to make some adjustments. So at this point, we know we want flour times the batch quantity. I can erase these uh, comments right here. Don't really need them right now. Baking soda is 0.5 times the batch quantity. So again, if it were a double batch, this would be 1.0, and this would be 4. If it was half a batch, we'd have one cup of flour instead of two, and all of that. But we're going to let the computer handle it for us, because while I can calculate half a batch or double batch in my, in my brain, I can't calculate um, 1.37 batches. So anyway, each of these we're multiplying by the batch quantity, so the original amount times batch quantity, that will give us, um, you know, the updated amounts. And I'm just going to copy this up here. We're just going to copy all of that, output it here, and what I'm going to do is also put the batch quantity and put batches at the end. So then you can see this is a half batch or something. So let me go ahead and run this program. So recipe program, here's the basics. Let's say we're going to make 3.5 batches. Oh no, I have an error. What is it not like? Can't multiply by non-int type? Oh yeah. So I made a mistake. Whenever we do an input, it is going to input this as a string. So a string is text inside of double quotes. What we want is this to be able to multiply, so it needs to be either an integer or a float, but since we have, you know, possibly 1.5 um, batches, we need this to be a float. So floating point numbers have um, decimal points. They could be like 2.0, but they could also be something else with a decimal. Integers can only be whole numbers. So we're going to cast this to a float. We, it gets the user input and then it turns it into a float. And so now I should be able to run this. Um, oh, do I need to stop? It wasn't happy. There we go. So we'll go ahead and run this again. 3.5 batches. And now here's the updated recipe. We'll need seven cups of flour instead of two cups of flour. And it adjusts the rest of these. So if you wanted to go make this many cookies, you could. And 
If you wanted to expand this program further, you could have, um, let's say you had if statements. We're, we're not doing if statements right now, but if you get to if statements, you could say, which recipe do you want to do? Do you want to do cookies? Do you want to do cakes? And stuff like that. Um, and of course, you can always expand these in different ways. So if you think about computers in like the 1980s, when people first started getting their own home computers, people would write little recipe programs and do this sort of thing, just so they'd have their recipe somewhere and, you know, be able to multiply it or other like kind of little home utilities and stuff. So anyway, hopefully that was pretty interesting or at least insightful. I'm going to commit this to the repository, which you don't really need to worry about that at this point, but I'm going to show you where you can find it online. So let me just push it onto the server. And I have my cookie recipe here. Don't need that. We want this place. I'll put this in the comments, the link to this. This is a repository of code. And to get to this project, you click on my variables and math folder. And then you can click on recipes. This is recipes.py. And it has all of the source code right here. And you can view it. Uh, if you click on this, you can download that file to run it on your own machine. And otherwise, as I add more example programs, they will all be in here. But this is my first example program in Python. So all we have is a variables and math folder at the moment. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that helped out.